So what exactly is IBS? So IBS stands for Irritable Bowel Syndrome. Basically, your bowels, your intestinal tract becomes irritable, which leads to symptoms like abdominal pain, bloating, diarrhea, constipation. The constellation of these symptoms together in a patient constitutes IBS. And these patients suffer immensely. So on a day-to-day -day basis, they could have unpredictable bowel movements. They could wake up in the morning, head out on the freeway, still no bowel movement, maybe none that day. Or maybe it's happening in the boardroom when they're supposed to give a presentation, suddenly they have to go to the bathroom. It is one of the most common diseases affecting our GI tract. Just in our country, in the United States, nearly 45 to 50 million are directly affected by IBS. IBS affects 10 to 15 percent of the population. So if you think about it globally, it's about a billion people worldwide. So with numbers that large, why is there still a stigma against IBS? Yes. So IBS has been stigmatized in part because physicians didn't understand it. People really did not understand this disease process. The doctors, the physician community, the healthcare providers started saying, you don't have a disease, it's all in your head. And one of the explanations is stress or anxiety or psychological trauma. And while those things are important and may contribute to sort of the severity of IBS, we don't believe they're the cause of IBS. What we do know in 2018 is that food poisoning definitely causes IBS. A very large trial published by the Mayo Clinic last year, 45 studies, shows that food poisoning triggers IBS. In the past, if I thought that I might have IBS, what would be the procedure that I'd go through to, to get a diagnosis? Now, gastroenterologists do not have a diagnostic test. So what they do is they will try to eliminate other diseases. So they will want to make sure you don't have an ulcer do an upper endoscopy. They want to make sure you nothing have, have in your colon. You will undergo a colonoscopy, a CAT scan, different blood tests, check your stools for infections. These were the tests to eliminate other diseases and then it became a, the disease of elimination. You don't have anything else, you probably have IBS. So how does IBS smart work? So IBS, we have finally found out, is a result of infection of the GI tract. Those infections leads to formation of certain two antibodies in your blood. One antibody is against a toxin called cytolethal distending toxin, B form, or CDTB. And that toxin is derived from food poisoning. But it turns out reacting to CDTB creates other antibodies against your own body to a protein called vinculin. And vinculin is important for the function of the nerves of the gut and other functions. IBS smart checks those two antibodies. If the levels of those two antibodies are above a certain threshold, the IBS Smart will tell you that you have this percent likelihood of having IBS. That is used to diagnose IBS and that's the mechanism of IBS Smart. Wow. How cost effective is this test for patients and for doctors? Just take four tests, for example, upper endoscopy, colonoscopy, CAT scan, ultrasound, MRI. All these combined together are a cost burden to the healthcare system and to the patient, just if you total up the co-pays for all these tests plus the additional burden of undergoing these invasive procedures. So that cost compared to the cost of IBS Smart, IBS Smart comes at a small fraction of that. Wow, this seems like a very empowering test for both patient and doctors. When a patient comes to us asking a question, we feel handicapped if I cannot give the answer to the patient. So if I can use a blood test, a simple blood test, to make a diagnosis and I'm able to tell the patient that you have IBS or you don't have IBS. It's very empowering to me. The other part of it is the patient. The patient feels empowered. They say, okay, look, it's not in my head. This is real. They get the answer in 48 hours so they can move on to treatment right away. They feel like they have control of their illness and they spend less money because they don't have to do all this testing. Can you tell me a little bit about the journey from where you started to get to IBS Smart? So IBS Smart is a long journey because 20 years ago we used to think IBS was caused by stress or anxiety or psychological trauma or something like that. But as we start to unravel IBS, we realize food poisoning causes IBS. So we had to understand food poisoning using animal models. And a lot of this work was done here at Cedar sinai Medical Center uh, where I work. And we discovered that this antibody forms to CDTB but also cross-reacts with humans. But then we did a study of over 2,000 patients to prove that this distinguishes IBS from other diarrheal diseases. So for the first time we can say you have IBS, not you have another disease or you don't and therefore you have IBS. So we're able to pin it down with one test. 